Welcome to AIN Debrief, where we take a deeper look at the most important or interesting aviation story of the past week with the AIN editor who covered it. I'm AIN News Editor Chad Trotvetter. This week, I'm joined by AIN Editor-in-Chief Matt Thurber. Matt recently had a rare opportunity to fly the Dassault Falcon 7X flight test aircraft fitted with an experimental single power throttle lever dubbed Smart Throttle. Because Smart Throttle was integrated with the fly-by-wire digital flight control system, Dassault was also able to include a one-button automatic upset recovery feature into the Trijet. If you want to take a deeper dive into this story and view a companion video, go to www.aionline.com. So Matt, you uh, traveled to France a few months ago for a top secret project at uh, Dassault. So what was that about? Yes, Chad, I, I went to uh, Paris last, uh, late last October, uh, coincidentally, just before France enacted lockdown two during the pandemic. Uh, Dassault invited me to fly on the last test flight of a flight test Falcon 7X to experience a couple of new features. One of them is called a smart throttle. And the other is a recovery button to help pilots get out of upset situations. Yeah, but the two are linked. Uh, the upset button is is linked to the smart throttle system, right? Yeah, absolutely. It's all part of the 7X's fly-by-wire digital flight control system. But the smart throttle uh, is interesting. It, it kind of adapts and updates some technology that's already in Dassault's twin-engine Rafale fighter jet, which has a single power lever to control both engines. And in the 7X, what they tested was a single power lever for all three engines. And what this does for the pilot is it makes it a lot easier to operate the engines because you don't really have to think about manipulating them separately. But especially if you lose one or two engines, all you do is you still just move the control as one and don't think about what you'd have to do in an emergency situation as far as pulling throttles back and all that kind of thing. Yeah, this is a significant safety advantage. Um, we've actually just reported on a couple accidents over the past two weeks where the crew uh, had an engine failure and they shut the wrong engine down. Uh, one was in a Global Express and another was in a helicopter. Exactly. And Something like this could totally eliminate that kind of accident. So once they have the, the smart throttle incorporated into the fly-by-wire system, that gave them the opportunity to add the recovery feature. And it's not too dissimilar from like the level button in a Garmin autopilot and other autopilot manufacturers are adopting uh, straight and level functions as well. But in, in the 7X, it really works from pretty radical attitudes. And that was what I was doing uh, during this, uh, this flight in the 7X. Well, tell us about that because you were, you were banking at 120 degrees. That's not normal for a, a Falcon. Exactly. So this was the last flight test in a series of tests that Dassault has been doing uh, on this smart throttle and recovery system. And it should be pointed out that this is not a system that Dassault has announced is going to be in any new aircraft or retrofit or anything. It's, it's really just something that they've been testing and it may be on a future program, but no announcements have been made as yet. So, uh, what they wanted to show me was not only how the smart throttle works, and we did demonstrate that on a one engine out uh, instrument approach where it was so so simple to just push the throttle forward and get whatever power is available from the remaining two engines. But after that, we climbed up to 20,000 feet for the real fun part. And... I was flying pretty much the whole time from the right seat in this case, because for this uh, series of flight tests, this 7X was set up 
to uh, to be safely operated by one pilot. So it didn't really need two pilots. So uh, the so test pilot Philippe Duchateau was in the left seat. Chief test pilot Tom Vallette was in the jump seat. And I was in the right seat flying the airplane. <clears throat> so at 20,000 feet, at around 250 knots, Philippe said, okay, now bank all the way over to 120 degrees, let the nose drop to about, I forget what it was, 10, 13, 15 degrees. And once we got into that attitude, he pushed a button on the panel that's the recovery button. And immediately the flight control system did what it needed to to bring us back into a level attitude at 250 knots. And I imagine that also worked the throttles as well, right? Exactly. It was, it was using the uh, full control of the power and complete control of the airplane's attitude to put us back in the right situation. From your story, one of the things I thought was really interesting was the um, electronic detents in the throttle system. And it could be programmed and it could actually be it, and actually be programmed for different segments of the flight. So the detents could be different uh, for crews as opposed to takeoff or landing, right? Exactly. That uh, It gives the engineers a lot of flexibility to design in different hard stops or soft stops, you know, long-range crews, maximum crews. It could have a hard stop programmed in if you're going too fast to tell you, hey, you don't want to add power at this point. It really makes it a lot easier to build in uh, protections to the, uh, to the flight control system by having full control of the uh, engine operation. I imagine it can have other safety uh uses as well beyond what they demonstrated, right? Actually, yes. And this was not something they tested in this particular uh, setup. But the Rafale has a air ground uh, automatic avoidance system, uh, not too dissimilar with the system that's also available in the Lockheed Martin F-16. And what it does is it constantly evaluates the trajectory of the airplane and if that trajectory is going to intersect the ground the flight control system takes over and pulls whatever g's it has to uses whatever power and control it needs to to keep the airplane from hitting the ground uh, as i understand there's been about nine f-16 saves so far with this system and since it was installed in the Rafale, there's been one save. And, you know, that's a huge, huge accomplishment, not just the cost of the aircraft, but saving lives that otherwise would have been lost. This could, this recovery, uh, air ground recovery function could be added to the 7X if, you know, if Dassault chooses to. But like I said, they haven't tested that yet in the 7X. Yeah, and I imagine there's other a, a lot of different safety features, and actually, perhaps even uh, for passenger comfort or efficiency, uh, it's almost limitless what you can do with a flight control system that's integrated with a, a, a throttle system, right? Oh yeah, and it's it. I mean, it's not as if auto throttles aren't integrated into fly by wire aircraft. This kind of steps up steps up the ability to control and fine tune what you can do with it. Absolutely. Do they have any further plans to um, test this? I know you said that uh, after your flight, they actually took this out of the, of the 7X test aircraft. Um, and they do, uh, do they have any idea what they might do with it? At this point, I'm sure they're crunching all the numbers and, and uh, seeing exactly what they've, <clears throat> what they've got from the, from the testing, but there's no indication yet as to where this is going to go. But I wouldn't be surprised to see it eventually develop into a product. The, the whole idea is that lets the pilot still fly the airplane as much as the pilot wants to. And, and the fly-by-wire Falcons really are great handling airplanes. But if the pilot gets into trouble or 
even is is you know just having a problem with something like related to uh, the engines with the smart throttle, it unloads a lot of burden on the pilot's resources so they can really focus on flying the airplane and and not uh, have to think through a lengthy checklist or go through a bunch of steps for an upset recovery where the airplane can pretty much do it for you. Right. And I guess on takeoff, if you lost an engine, it would help a lot too. Uh, keeping control of the airplane, um, you wouldn't have to be stepping on the rudder. It would actually do that for you, right? Yeah. And again, that's that's something that most modern aircraft do. They have rudder bias that helps you make, make sure uh, – <clears throat> you stay somewhat straight, although they all usually want the pilot to step on the rudder a little bit to keep the pilot in the loop. But again, you lose an engine, just push the throttle forward. That's all you have to do. Everything else is taken care of. Let's get off track a little bit. Uh, So you traveled to France uh, in COVID times. Um, So how was the travel experience getting to and from France? It was pretty interesting, actually. Uh, we, we did have to get special permission from the French government, and we did, so that was fine. But I had to get a COVID test within 72 hours of departure. And what was interesting was that while the French authorities required the COVID testing, the only place I had to show anyone the actual results of the COVID test was the Delta Airlines agent when I checked in for departure. We landed elsewhere in Europe and nobody there cared to see any test results or anything. And when I arrived in France, again, it was just like a normal arrival. Nobody there checked anything about me at all. The only big change was I had planned to spend a couple of days off after this flight to uh, go hiking in the Calanques, which is uh, not too far from Marseille, where we had to fly to for the, uh, for the flight testing in Istra. But we had to cancel the hiking trip because the new lockdown was happening just at the end of my trip. And non-essential activities like hiking were were uh, off the table. In fact, I I did come home a day early. Uh, just I think that was the night of the actual lockdown starting. So it all worked out in the end. But again, coming back to the U.S. through Atlanta, not a single question about COVID. Uh, re-entering the country. Yeah, I imagine uh, if you did that right now, it would be a little different. I kind of hope so. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thanks, Matt. Thanks for sharing your story. Thanks, Chad. It was a lot of fun. Thanks for listening to AI and Debrief. Another podcast episode will air next Friday. In the meantime, go to www.aionline.com for the latest aviation news from AIN. <laughs>